See, somebody told me it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. But some of us don't ever want to leave where we from to go to where we need to be to do the things we want to do. The three things that an engineer really needs to be, one is competent. Nobody ain't come here to get somebody who ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing. We got to put academic uh, achievement back on the table, Nesby. We got to make that a primary stake. We can have 100,000 engineers showing up at a convention center in any city, any year, but we got to make sure that they're competent and being able to do the things that they're supposed to be doing when they're on campus. We can have Nesby love, but you better have some Nesby knowledge. We got too much love and not enough knowledge. Because you see, we play too much and we clown too much. And somehow we think there's somebody out there planning for our future. We really do think the only thing I have to do is get through school and they're going to be a job for me. That ain't the truth. Because they winning and the only people they looking for are winners. And some of us walking around here dressed like winners, but really know that we losing. Yeah, I said it, I'm in it, and I'm here to, I'm here to represent it. I'm a college professor, and it was so funny, I, I was a professor at Tulane for 12 years, but in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, Tulane did an unbelievable thing. They decided to keep the football team and eliminate the engineering program. So as the only African-American ever tenured in the history of the College of Engineering at Tulane, I was shown the door and I'll never forget what my students used to say. Never forget one of these white students jumped up one day and he said, Dr. Mackey, you don't like white people. And my black student jumped up and said, yeah, but he don't like black people either. <laughs> there they go right there. They said I didn't like them because I had one standard because I expected the most and the best out of every kid that came into my classroom. And that's what everybody here at Nesby is looking for. They're not looking for somebody who just happened to major in engineering and just happened to go through four years or five years or six years or eight years of engineering. <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> the race is not won by the swiftest or the strongest, but by he or she who endures it to the end. <laughs> it just takes some of us longer than others. But you better make sure that you're competent in doing the things that you're doing because when a company hires you, they expect you to be able to do the job. That's the minimal expectation. The next thing you better be is flexible. You better be flexible. It blew my mind when the kids from St. Lucia came up here and we clapped and we hopped. Whoa, St. Lucia! 28 kids came from St. Lucia because they saw an opportunity and they wanted an opportunity, but Walmart can't get 28 kids to leave their hood and come to Benville and be engineers. Ooh. We got to go where the opportunities are. We saying we want to be winners. We got to take Nesby around the world. This is not about your hood. This is about where you need to go to be on a winning team to make your dreams come true. And that's a part of our history. That's our history. African Americans brought here as slaves and the only thing that we was brought here for was the use of our hands and our backs. And at some point in time that went away because in like 1943 in Clarksdale, Mississippi, Carl, they invented something called an automatic cotton picker, and the farmers in the South no, no longer needed the backs in the hands of black people. And over five million blacks left the South and went all over this country looking for opportunity. And you people from New York, you telling you know I'm telling the truth because if you if you, if you lived in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, your people went up the Eastern Seaboard to Philadelphia and New York. That's why all y'all in New York got people down South in South Carolina. And all the people in Louisiana, all the people in Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee, they went straight up north, I-55, to Chicago and Detroit. That's why, that's why Chicago is called uh, North Mississippi. And everybody in Detroit with them ugly suits got families down in Mississippi. <laughs> and everybody yeah, in Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas, they went west to California. So if you're from Louisiana, you got, you got some light-skinned relatives out in California. 
Then they went up the eastern seaboard to places like Portland, Oregon, and uh, Seattle for shipping because they were after opportunity. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm from back of town, Girktown, Zion City. I'm from that Wild Magnolia, I thought I told you. I'm from that CP3. I'm from that Lord 9 where we don't mind dying. You know you know me. <laughs> don't act brand new with me. You see, I'm bilingual. <laughs> so the third thing we need in every last one of you, we need a global perspective. Those kids from St. Lucia, they have a global perspective. But many of you all are just focused on this continental thing called the USA, talking about I ain't going to never go north, I'm never go south, I never go east, I never go west, I never go to Arkansas, and all the opportunity in the world may be in Arkansas, and you unemployed in Chicago looking all lost. <laughs> Nobody won't hire me, because there may not be no opportunity there, Holmes. You have to go where the opportunity is. And you should seek out corporations and opportunities that's going to take you around the world. We're not training you to talk about something East Coast, West Coast. We're training you to compete with the world. And as if you don't understand it, if you don't know it, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. See why we poured in? See why we're trying to do the stanky leg and the duggy? See why we're worrying about Xbox 360 and Twitter and Facebook and this and that? I want to let you in on a little secret. If nobody ever told you, I just want to let you in on this little secret. And the people not here, don't tell them. I want you all to know, right now at this moment, there's a little kid in India and a little kid in China studying under the cloak of darkness to a candle, preparing for the day to kick your behind, and it's not even personal. It's not even personal. <laughs> They don't care if you black, if you white, if you rich, if you poor. They don't care if you go, went to a HBCU or historically white college. They just want the opportunities that we're not taking advantage of in a place called America. <laughs>